Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Brai Chimetza. I'm from Zimbabwe. Um, my project going back home is going to be focusing on civic agency for action. I'm looking towards establishing an organization called Center for Civic Agency. Uh, my driver, I'm a political scientist. Thomas Hobbes once said, he or she who complaineth because of the injury of the sovereign should not complain because you're the author yourself. Democracy in Zimbabwe is backsliding. The rift between human rights defenders and the government is deepening. To be sincere, democracy in Zimbabwe is in the intensive care unit. Post-independence to date, citizens have been subjected to systematic human rights violations. And that consequently has affected their participation in political processes. This, what you see, is the misconception of civic agents in Zimbabwe. The lady being dragged there is the former lady to the former vice president of Zimbabwe, to the former army general of the Zimbabwe National Army, who is currently the uh, vice president of Zimbabwe. Her name is called Mary Chiwenga. This was a situation, and this cartoon was made by a citizen, saying that civil societies are responsible for intervening in this case. But are we to say that civil societies or citizens could not intervene and raise their voice on this matter? They could. This is not only the situation where citizens were supposed to intervene on issues that affect them. In 2021, 21 members of parliament were recalled 117 local councillors were recalled from local government. What happened? Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. The citizens were frogmarched in Woodrick and went to the by-elections. But these people who were recalled from parliament were voted by citizens. They were removed from parliament or from the local government by a stroke of a pen without any consultations with the citizens. This is a trend. This is a study which was done by PACT. They reported that 41% of the people in Zimbabwe are constitutional illiterate. 68% of the people in Zimbabwe are not aware of the Declaration of Rights. 75% of the people do not believe that the power of duty bearers comes from the people. They are not aware of the social control. This is very damning. Now, what you find is that we have a situation whereby citizens have disengaged and disconnected themselves from civic and political processes, which is the foundation of democracy. And that as an intervention, we are proposing a four-pronged strategy that's looking at collaborative government, civic action and community empowerment, civic engagement relation and civic literacy, and lastly, civic entertainment. Everything is centered on the citizen. Advocacy cookout forums. These are forums whereby our culture normally in Zimbabwe is embedded on sharing meals. The term is wukama igashwa unazatwa Basically, we build relationships through sharing meals. These ones are the platforms whereby we provide people the room to discuss, assemble, converge, and discuss contextual issues affecting them give them the capacity to conceptualize their own advocacy activities. They have their own action tools, action agendas they have to work on. Everything has to be grassroots driven and everything has to be organic from these platforms. Secondly, we are looking towards establishing a civil society community center. This is simply a command center which coordinates civil societies in Zimbabwe. Recently, there is a bill, the private voluntary organization bill, which is, actually in the, which is actually going to be in the pipeline and is likely going to restrict civil society operations within the country. I was part of a Heads of Coalitions meeting in Zimbabwe. We discussed the challenge, we discussed the solutions, but we didn't agree on one thing. Who is going to coordinate the civic space in Zimbabwe? All the civil societies wanted to do that. And the reason why we have that danger is because we have not identified who coordinates the civic center. And this civic center is not only going to be an organization of us. It's going to comprise of faith-based organizations, disability organizations, women organizations, and uh, other civil societies. But the center is not only going to be a coordination space. The center is going to comprise of two things. It's going to comprise of a civic tech lab, 
we want to ride on digital activism. Activism in Zimbabwe is very scary. People usually ride on digital activism because if you confront the state, you're likely going to be incarcerated. The second thing is that we're going to have a human rights hive whereby we give a platform for, for citizens to interface with civil society leaders, funding partners, and engage and find pathways of how they can actually come up with their own civil society activities or organic grassroots activities. The last one is the Human Rights School. This is going to be the flagship of the organization. And with this, we are going to annually train 25 participants drawn from all 10 provinces within the country, give them tailor-made curriculum which suits their projects. At the beginning of the Human Rights School, we are going to pair them in groups of five. They are going to collectively work on a human rights project, which they will implement shortly after this project. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a question which was once asked, what did you learn from this fellowship? This is a quote which puts this drive. Real change will never come by as long as citizens, marginalized communities, are not in power. Thank you very much.